Hello everyone, welcome to Playcovers Office Hours, where we work through problems posed by the community. I'm Stephen Yao, otherwise known as Yast on the Forums, and today we're looking at a thread uh, by Lucas uh, on rotating an object around the y-axis using mouse drag. Um, so in the post below, they've posted a uh, video of what they're trying to achieve and what they're actually getting out of it. And this will load anytime soon. Come on. There we go. And you can see here, they're trying to do what looks like to be a kind of ring control, gizmo control, where you rotate around the object to, so you rotate a gizmo around the object to rotate the object itself and place it. Um, and if we go back on it, and they've shared the bits of code they are using to do this. Um, and I've asked them like, to give them a, uh, give us a like, small example project to work from because this one of the cases where it's difficult to give a concrete uh, concrete solution that will work for their uh, actual site environment, so to speak, uh, in their situation. And also gives me a better idea of like how you know how the sorry, how the logic's working in the video they posted. And they've done this here, which is great. Uh, I have forked it, so uh, here we go. Now I can see here. Let me refresh that. So they've got it here in simplify form, which is fantastic. This allows me to like, uh, expect it. so it allows me to look at it in depth and like change the code and give them a more complete solution. Um, this is going to be a longer video than normal because this is actually quite a. It's going to be like a detailed topic because I actually, when I'm, when I'm going through like solutions of this in my head, I thought it'd be good to give an op an office hours video uh, example of this because. Um, there's like tips and tricks along the way that can be used elsewhere and to other people's projects. So I thought I uh, would do this as a office hours video and explain sort of how it works and sort of visual help visualize it. So first, let's look at uh, their project. Mm -hmm. And we see, so we've got these handles and it looks, well, looks like something's going wrong. Um, could tell you exactly what it is. Um, so let's, Take a look at the code. Um, actually, you know what? I want to actually move that camera first because I want to see. Let's move that camera first. So, I've got a lot, slightly better ideas like yeah, where we see the angles because looking at a circular top down, a circle top down rotating is difficult. Anyway, uh, now we've got that. Uh, let me go back to perspective. Uh, go to scripts. They've got one script, and we look at the references. We can see it's attached to a button. So I assume the buttons are these grab, uh, these bits here. Uh, let's take a look at the code for that. And we can see here that uh, each button will have a parent entity, a parent rotation UI. Uh, we'll change the cursor to grab when you mouse over it and we leave it, it goes to default, that's fine. Uh, it toggles this can rotate uh, variable, which is global. And on the mouse move, if it can rotate, so if we've hovered over a button and we move, uh, and sorry, and uh, left mouse button is held down, rotate around uh, d dot x. So dot uh, dx on the event is the amount the mouse has moved along the x axis across the screen um, in the since in the last frame, and rotate around will do a rotate local of the UI and the parent and see. Uh, across the so one's on the z axis that's interesting and one's on the y axis so parent ui what's parent rotation ui let's scroll down so parent rotation ui is the circle okay so that's that and assume that's the ring yep that's the ring and then uh what we've got and the parent is the table right so uh, cool okay which is also parented to the 3D screen. So if the table moves, so does the screen. That's a bit odd. I'll say that, that is a little bit odd. So that means that we're doing double rotation. First we're doing first we're doing a rotation of the parent, which is this. So it's rotating that first, and then it's rotating this on top of it. So you're doing double rotations. Um, that's one issue. Uh, another issue is because this is a global variable. And we have two instances of the script. It means that because they're both listening to mouse uh, mouse movement, 
that means they're both doing this rotate around. So again, every time I try, I will try to rotate in the, in the app, it's doing a rotation for one button and it's doing a rotation for the other button because this is global. It's going to be true for both instances of the script type. So first of all, let's fix that to make that local. So this dot can rotate equals false. And get rid of that. Sensitivity, I'm willing to leave global because um, it doesn't affect it. It's used as a constant rather than it's used as a constant to sorry, move, uh, move the rotation. Uh, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, let's just fix this. So can rotate is make sure we refer to the local vert. So make sure we refer to the script, uh, script type instance of this variable. Can rotate. So that solves the double rotation on both buttons. Um, so now only should happen for one button at uh, for one button that we've hovered over, and since we are rotating the parent entity, which is parent, which is a parent of the UI, we no longer need to do this. So let's comment that out, and let's take a look how we how we fare so far. Camera taken on. Oh, oh, whoops! This this that's not right. Okay, so still going a bit wrong, and but we can see there is some rotation going, and this is where the second bit of the code is. Uh, so this is where another section of the code is a bit odd. Is we see in front of the video that they want to do a kind of drag around the NC type control. However, the code they got here. Is only rotating based on the movement of the mouse along the x axis. So, really, it's only caring about whether I'm moving left or right here. And of course, when we rotate it, we obviously rotate, we rotate the button, and the button moves away from the mouse, and therefore we call uh, mouse leave and can rotate is false. So, we've got this kind of weird jumpy movement where it's moving a bit at a time. And because it's moving away from my mouse, I don't get this like nice continuous uh, movement. So what we're going to do instead is I'm going to temporarily ignore the fact they want to do a ring motion because I will talk about that later, but go with the logic they've got so far, which is they want to be able to like click on the button and drag left or right to rotate, rotate the uh, object. So what we're going to do here is instead of ensuring, instead of checking whether they're on the button to uh, to rotate it or when the mouse move, we're going to go if they're on the button. So if we're on the button and we mouse down, we go into a different state of where we can, where we can rotate. And then until we let go, that can rotate a flag won't be disabled. So let's do that. Uh, so can rotate is true. That's fine. That's false. So what we're going to add is a new variable, which is this dot, uh, is over button equals false. And we only care about this on the foot, on the mouse down. So that's fine. And then we're going to do some this dot app dot mouse dot on ec dot oh, event mouse down. Uh, this dot on mouse down. And use the scope of this variable. Go and grab this. And we do uh, mass down. And I believe, uh, let me just double check the references for the mouse events. I think the mouse event should have the button that was pushed. Do, do, do. Uh, element will delta button, the button associated with this event. So that is a list of constants. That's fine. Okay, so if can rotate is fine. Oh, I want to collapse that. So we want to, it's over button. And e dot button is equal to pc dot mouse down. Oh, no, sorry, not mouse down. So I'm busy picking ahead at the moment. Uh, busy button F. Then this dot mm -hmm -hmm. can rotate. 
equals true and then we want to do a on mouse up event for much the same reason uh, force we don't care we only care if uh, on mouse up when we mouse up we don't really care what we're over so this can be rotated to force that's fine and we just add that event too right okay so let's double check this um we've got two oh we've got two uh two properties uh one for camera tape one for is over, over a button the over button is only used on the mouse enter mouse leave uh, events for the button which is fine we've got three input uh listeners one for mouse move which checks if you can rotate and if the left mouse, uh, left mouse button is down then we would start doing the rotation uh, based on the mount, mo mount movement we made, sorry, the mount of movement we made on the mouse and along the x-axis of the screen, which is across here. On mouse down, we check we're over the button. If we are, we check if the uh, mouse left button is pressed down. I'm going to we can rotate mode, and then on mouse up, uh, we just go. We can we can stop rotating and then rotate around with only just rotating the parent entity. So let's try that. I'm confident in my skills here. So, oh, that's pretty high. That's pretty fast. Let's, re uh, let's reduce the uh, delta, uh, sensitivity down to maybe one. Let's try one and see how bad good it is. So over. There we go. So we've got we've got step one a long way. So this, if the if the user wants this, this is like this is more than enough uh, for them to be able to rotate that object the way they want to. But if we want to do the ring movement, uh, then we need to do something a little bit more fancy. So first of all, let's create a checkpoint here. Say um, made table rotate with uh, the, uh, with dx of mouse. Create checkpoint. Okay, so if we want to do a ring movement, there are several different ways we can do this. Um, we can use a combination of trigonometry and uh, vector math, uh, such as the dot product and work out uh, the angle from where I was originally, where I first started and in the last frame and where I'm, where the mouse is this frame, work out the angle between the two and then rotate the table around that much. Um, but what I'm going to do instead, uh, which I was thinking about this uh, while earlier today, was I'm going to take advantage of the operations, uh, sorry, the, uh, not operation, the current API uh, we have for entities such as the look at uh, function on the entity and also take advantage of the get and set uh, global world uh, rotation on this uh, because I think this is a lot easier to visualize and a little um, easier to debug in some ways because uh, there's various ways you can sort of render stuff to screen to debug so the way I'm going to do this is um, I'm going to create a, effectively a set of entities to use as a gizmo or as a, like an invisible gizmo and for this I'm going to visualize this in the scene so uh, to help explain sort of what I'm thinking about doing so I'll create an entity call that the gizmo and almost oh, so, like uh, gizmo helper let's call it gizmo helper and then as a child I'm going to call this the uh, proxy okay so what my intention is if I create, let me temporarily create a render. There we go, a box. And move that out of the way. Move that to 0 0.0y, so it's about to whoop up a thing. And if I temporarily clone this, if I borrow this, I have my proxy, which is humongous. Let's make that a bit smaller. Okay, maybe that's small. Uh, maybe a hundredth of size. And set that to zero, zero, zero. Okay. And, uh, okay, so what I've got here is effectively my uh, Gremlin Helper and uh, the proxy is going to represent the object that we want to actually rotate. Uh, my intention was, if I move this to local space and 
what I'm thinking about doing is when it comes to the mouse down uh, event, so when we mouse down and we're at a point where I say, right, we can rotate, I'm going to teleport, as I teleport, I set the position of the gizmo helper uh, to be the same position of the object that we're rotating. So in this case, the table, which is fine. I'm going to have a look at the world position of my mouse. So the uh, forward is negative Z. So let's say my mouse was down here. I would have it look. I would set the rotation. Uh, I would use the look at function to set the rotation of the gizmo helper to look at where the mouse would be, which would be here, which is fine. And then I'm going to set the global position, so global rotation of the proxy to match the uh, the object that we're uh, that we're intending to rotate. And then with that, it means that if I'm as long as I'm um, telling the gizmo helper to always look at the mouse button every frame. So let's say I rotate clockwise. Because it's rotating, obviously it's ch child is rotating. And what I can do is every frame as well, set, get the global rotation of the proxy and set it as the uh, set the rotation of the object we're rotating to be exactly the same. So as we are using the look at function to, uh, as using the look at function to effectively rotate the gizmo helper, it means that we can take advantage of the math that the engine's already doing for all the transformations of parent and child to get the global rotation of the proxy and using that for the model that we're rotating. So in theory, this should work. Uh, so let me get rid of all these bits and pieces, uh, the render, because that was just there for visualization purposes. And uh, get rid of that, don't need that anymore. So what we're gonna do here is uh, reset handle, blah, blah, don't need that anymore. So let's get rid of that. We definitely don't need that. And I've uh, got the parent is fine. Rotate handle dot attributes dot add and uh, have a reference to the gizmo helper. Let's move the up one. And right, so all this stuff is still valid. So what we need here is a function that projects the mouse position to the uh, to the world position. And here we're going to heavily assume that the model we're rotating is only going to rotate on the world y axis. Um, this is going to be important because when we project our mouse position to the world, you want to set the y position of the of our mouse world position to be the same as the table, so you can look at it without affecting its local uh, x and y, uh, x and y, x and z uh, uh, coordinate. Uh, sorry, coordinate x and x and z rotation. So we go and rotate handle dot prototype dot uh, mouse to world. So project to world mouse to world. Uh, project mouse. Well, oh, and with this, we need, also need the camera as well. We need the camera reference. Um, blah, blah, blah. So let's do that. Camera entity. Okay, so in uh, we've got camera entity. Let me go to tutorials. So I got. Normally, I start copy and paste some of this like uh, world to mouse to world stuff, and we have one I believe in point and click, point and click movement. There we go. That'll do. And uh, uh, update mouse to mouse to boo boo position. Do right. Oh, so do do run 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 run. Boom boom. Right, that's what I want. So we'll come and see where we add so we want the screen position. Um, and we only need to do this for the far clip. Do you far clip? Oh, wait, hang on a second. No, we need to now remember. We actually should project a ray. Yeah, so, okay, for this, uh, sorry, I'm going to fall back a bit. 
Uh, I completely forgot that for this to actually work, I need to actually cast a ray into the world. Um, so as the project is not the point of the project, as the um, where's it gone? Where's it gone? Where's it gone? As they already have a collision for the floor and using ammo, I'm going to use a physics ray cast for this. So I do the physics ray cast. Tutorials, uh, casting, 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 collision. There should be one for ray picking. Or casting, ray cast. There we go, ray cast. Anti picking, grabbed one for physics. Uh, do, do. That's what you want. My bad, my bad. Okay, so we've got uh, Valfarom, Good World, blah blah, that's fine. Uh, e, X, so screen position, so let's replace all that to a screen position. And do a visit raycast from and to, which is fine. Get that as a result. I'll return null. And for this, we're going to return a. What are we going to return? We're going to return the result dot point. So we've checked the mass of the world, that's fine. Um, what we're going to do as well for this is to ensure that, because uh, I believe the table has collision as well. Um, yeah, it does. So what we're going to do uh, to ensure that we don't raycast against the table is tag the thing, uh, tag the floor. To ensure that's ours. Uh, so tag the floor. So we only take into account of raycasts or positions that intersect with the floor and not with the table. And instead of raycasts first, we're going to do raycasts all. And that will give us a list of results, I believe. Where's the API? Uh, so rigid body component system, raycasts all. That will give us a raycast result. Yep, so results. And then for all the results, go through the, uh, the array of result and look for the one with a floor tag. Dot results dot length. If results of i dot oop, nc dot tags dot has and got floor then return results dot point I'll get rid of this. Cool, cool. Okay, so we've got, uh, so we've got our project uh, mouse to world uh, function. Uh, oh, uh, what we need to do is replace that logic with the currency that we reference, which is fine. Okay, so now on mouse down, um, what we need to do is set the position of the gizmo parents to where uh to the entity that we're rotating have it look at the current the uh, mouse world position that we use with project mouse to world set the rotation of the model uh to match uh, so, so set the rotation of the proxy to match the global the rotation of the model and then on mouse move always look at or set the gizmo to always look at the mouse world position and then set the model rotation the model that we're rotating rotation to match the proxies okay let's see if i can remember that off uh, offhand so uh current rotate that's fine so we set the this dot gizmo helper dot set position 
to be the same as our parent entity. Get position. Fine. Uh, this dot gives my helper. Oh, we need to get the um, uh, var uh, mass well position equals this dot uh, reject mass world. Use the uh, event because that has the x and y position of the mouse in it. Uh, check if we check if it's not null because if we do, if we're not over uh, with not over the floor, uh, then it's, well, this won't work. Uh, if our, if mouse position is fine, then we can rotate otherwise this can rotate is equal to force. And then what we're going to do is, uh, first of all, this lock gives me a helper. All right, first of all, with the mouse wire position, we're going to ensure that's level with the table that we're looking at. So here we go this dot. Um, gives me a helper dot to look at. Go back to the API. Um, look at look at look at properties, methods, find my name, properties, look on the inherited ones. Ah, uh, yes, look at so that can take a set of three, perfect. So look at I'm um, give it an XYZ, uh, which will be this was uh, this so be mouse position dot x. Uh be whatever this current uh, this parent entity uh dot get position dot y so always on the same uh, x z so always the same y position as the model uh, that we're rotating and mass y position dot z okay uh, next step is to set the global position of the proxy um so as you know it's always going to be the first child so this dot um what's it this dot uh gizmo helper but children and go to this proxy dot set rotation to be the same as our current NT rotation get rotation um Oops, that's not right. That's oh, right. We get our proxy. Then our proxy will do that rotation. So match the proxy. Match the proxy uh, orient uh, rotation with the model that we're rotating. And I believe that would be it. And now on move, what we're going to do is the same thing. Uh, var world position. have this gives me a look at the mass position and get the proxy but instead of get instead of setting the rotation we're going to get the position of the proxy and do the reverse so rather uh, so this will be this dot parent dot set rotation and using the proxy get rotation instead I believe that would be it. Uh, we're no longer using rotate around. That's fine. Let's, let's double check this. Um, so on mass down, we're going to set the position of the Gizmo helper to a projection. Um, so set the position of the Gizmo helper to be the same position as a model that we want to rotate. Get the mass well position by projecting a ray in the physics and getting it hitting the floor. 
on the whatever as long as we hit the floor we can rotate and always have the gizmo uh, set the gizmo helper to look at my uh, mouse wall position get the proxy uh, nc that is a child of the gizmo helper set that to match the rotation of the model that we're rotating so that when we mouse well, when we mouse move we do the same thing except we set the rotation of the model we're trying to rotate for the proxy and so let's give that a try oh that's it we can't give it a try because we need to parse our bunch of attributes so we've got camera nc with the gizmo helper which should be invisible because you can see it and same again camera nc gizmo helper because two buttons and let's give that a try Uh, parentity not defined. What do you mean parentity not defined? Ah, so we're going to do this dot parentity. So any place I set it? Okay, let's try it again. Screen to world is not a function. It is. Oh, it is not, is it? And you get the and you get the camera component on the camera entity. Okay, and that is doing very little. Okay, so now this is uh, now this is why I said about this example in the first place because it's a lot easier to visualize. So what we're going to do is uh, first of all we're going to set a render to be a box, and then I'm going to have a another primitive uh, sphere, which is going to be a lot smaller, maybe 0.25. 0.5 and set that along to be along the positive x on this way is pointing so this is just giving me an idea so I can see which way it's pointing so it's doing the teleport at least so over here click doing teleport but it's not looking at anything so let's figure out what's going on uh chances are it's probably it's probably the raycast that's going wrong I uh, rotate around handle. Um, it is probably this actually. Oh, I'm not even going to do project mass twelve. Why is it not doing that? Da, da, da. I'll mouse down. Is it not calling it anything? So the results is length for zero. That's interesting. Oh, from is a nan. Okay, so the reason why this went wrong is because again I forgot that um, these I forgot to refer to the camera component for the near clip and far clip uh, places. So camera. Okay, let's take a look at this. Oh, there we go. Have I put the spear on the wrong axis? Because that's not, is that on its local Z? RGB. RGB. Uh, uh, so this is uh, one of those uh, issues that a viewer recommended, uh, sorry, a user recommended that we do is we put little letters on the end of each uh, of the arrows so you know which, which ones it is. I forgot that Z is blue, not red. RGB, X, Y, Z. Z is blue. So this is why it looks a bit wrong. Uh, so instead of this, it should be moved along the negative Z, which is negative blue. And here we go. All right, perfect. So now I can visualize it and see it and now I can get rid of all the helper renders. So I don't need this, don't need that. And all we got, is a beautifully rotating table which always looks at or rotates with the position of the mouse awesome uh took a little while to get there uh but i'm happy with that actually that turned out a lot better than i thought it would fantastic so what i'm gonna do is create a checkpoint um looks at mouse rotation and send this back to the user Hope you found this helpful, even if it was a bit bumbly. Uh, I was actually doing this for the very first time myself during the whole video.
Uh, but hopefully it shows you like how we can use the current entity uh, hierarchical system to help with certain calculations such as this, where you're trying to rotate something through a certain way. You could potentially use, uh, there may be ways you can use the current entity hierarchical system with the look at, the get and set rotations to do the behavior you want without having to do the actual map itself. It's probably not as well optimized, but quite frankly, it works really well. Uh, and it's easy to understand and easier to debug visually as well, as you saw. Thank you very much. I'll be seeing you in the next one. Bye.